All right. All right. Oh, shit, dude. Wake up. <laughs> What's up? <First> of the month. <laughs> wake up. It's podcast time. Um, well, three of us need to wake up. Well, I don't, you just took a nap, so you're kind of refreshed, right? I'm good, dude. You're good. Oh, I'm always good. I'm dude. awake. I'm geeked. Fucking Jordan. I don't know what's up. <laughs> Jordan, dude, I know. <laughs> He's I over here dancing like and a shit. motherfucker, dude. <laughs> Oh man, these energy drinks are making your life unmanageable right now. It dude. is, dude. You crush them. I know. I, I I really do need to stop. I got a coffee today, and I thought that you know I was being better, and then you know followed by tonight drinking three energy drinks. Are you uh, on your third? I already finished my third. So. Oh, dude, you're nice. wired. I drank one at the meeting, and then two since we've been here. <laughs> nice. So uh, yeah, yeah. That that needs to be one of the things that goes next on my quit list. That and the nicotine. Ooh, um, the nicotine. Mm, Been on yeah. that last vape for a while now. Yeah, <laughs> a no. couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> this is you. the last one each time. I just love how serious you were when you told me that, though. I, what, dude, you didn't I was even make eye contact. Serious, dude. You like, looked at the stars and were like, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready, dude. I was, I was full on ready. And then the second that thing ran out, I was like... I got to get another one. Uh, <laughs> Fuck. I know. It's rough, dude. I remember, th I remember like the first time that I went to go quit, like I had ran out of cigarettes and I was like, this can be a legitimate moment. You believe it. Like, well, no, no. Well, hold on. <laughs> I believe that I wanted to. And then I drove past the store and the panic mode set in the same way as like when I was quitting drugs or something like that. And I was like, oh shit. And it was like, dude, you've always said it. Like, them damn cigarettes make your life unmanageable. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I always, like, would get pissed at you. And I'd be like, dude, shut up, Donnie. <laughs> Don't start with that. <laughs> but then, like, now I'm starting to pay attention to little things. And I'm like, ah, yeah, yeah, making stops, spending mm -hmm. money, taking time away. Yep. I can see it, dude. Unmanageability. Yeah. You're coming hey. up on a year, right? Yeah, man. Uh, should have a year by the time we drop this episode. If I make it that a year, a year of no smoking cigarettes, dude. You know? Yeah, that was fuck one of the hardest things I ever did, man. But the uh, the the freedom that I feel now from not smoking cigarettes, and I look back and reflect and see how much freaking control those things had over me. It's insane, and uh, like the unmanageability. I free, I remember one time like when I was trying to quit, and I was like, I'm not gonna buy a pack. I'm not gonna buy a pack, and I, I leave the bank. And I, like I, I surrendered to the the addiction at the bank. I like I like <laughs> at the bank. I, no, I, like, I, I like picked up money for some reason. Uh, I don't know why. I like I got some cash out just to have some cash. And then I was like, I was like, all right, you know, I was like, fuck it. I need a pack of cigarettes like right now because this was like I don't, know, I don't know six or eight hours throughout my day that I didn't smoke a cigarette. And that thought the whole time was just so powerful, man. And I I like crossed. I pulled out of the bank. And I went across the street to this little like convenience store. Well, I didn't use my turn signal. I got pulled over going to get a pack of cigarettes. And then he gave me a seatbelt ticket <laughs> that was like $75, dude, all because I had to go across the street to get a pack of cigarettes. And that's when I was like, wow, these things are <laughs> literally making my life unmanageable and like costing me money. The power of a cigarette. And it was like a huge realization that day when I fucking did that, dude. And, and then I... I proceeded to quit i don't like i don't know a month after that or so how you feel about that <laughs> um that's like dude the, i quit doing fent fentanyl and <laughs> <laughs> drinking dude. like leave my fucking energy drinks and cigarettes bro like fuck dude let me have something <laughs> let me have something dude it like, feels that way for real though. it does man but i get it man i just get winded dude like just playing soccer and just like trying to be active and exercising and stuff like that it does take yeah. a toll <laughs> health wise like I, I do but like i enjoy smoking a cigarette man do you i do <laughs> okay i really do i believe you so i mean i time. still look at them and they, they they it still like looks good you know it's just like the drugs are drinking but i know that it's it's not good for me it's not serving me at all but I do agree with you, Goomer. I mean, that's that one last like, crutch. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, I, I, I gotta, I give myself some slack because, like you said, like, yeah. considering what I have given up so far, like, right. just leave me alone for a little bit. I, I feel you on that too, man. I'll There's, get there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'll be here for you. But I'm really, I'm I've been trying to quit for like six months. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try, just do it. You know, I told myself I'm not gonna quit. I'm not gonna say this is the last pack. Like, I'm just not gonna buy them anymore or try not to buy them. 
And like if you know if you're around, I'll just bum them off you. Dog, <laughs> I tried. I tried that for you'll months. Be you'll I be buying cigarettes for the whole oh, group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I smoked OPCs, dude, for like two months. I'd be bum cig other people's cigarettes. <laughs> OPCs. <laughs> I'd I was well, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> every me every meeting I bump cigarettes off people, but yeah. it is a different type of unmanageability though, man. Like I said, I don't want to sit here and like bash it. I don't really want to make this episode a cigarette episode no, like at no. all. But do but, you ever do you ever miss time with your family because of cigarettes? God damn it. I just said I didn't want to make this. <laughs> 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 like I'm already bored with this, dude. I'm, I'm bored in the house. Yeah, I'm bored in the house. I know. I mean, well, you want to talk about unmanageability? What? Oh, yeah. Nothing. What are you gonna say? You're good. I'm don't manage. don't do it. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say unmanageability. I got a story on unmanageability. Fucking, yeah, <laughs> Tell me your unmanageability story. <laughs> so uh, this one time, this is a few years back. Uh, I went to EDC, which if you don't know what EDC is, it's like a a giant fucking rave in the middle of Vegas. So you take like the two things that I love most, Vegas and raves. Do you did you love Vegas? Like I that? love Vegas, dude. Really? I still love Vegas because uh, uh, you. Uh, you get to be fucked up the whole time, and it's oh. perfectly acceptable. Where, did I didn't even gamble? go gamble. No. no, you didn't get. Oh, I went. So that's yeah. I, like Vegas. I went to pool. I I I lost lots of money because I went to pool parties. I spent it all on booze. Like fucking, I was going to clubs and doing all that shit in Vegas. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I love fucking DJs and electronic music. So, and that's where they all just like play every single night. Like world headliners are always in Vegas. Right. So I went to I went to this rave or EDC. And uh, so the whole time, the whole day leading up, like it, it start, it goes from like seven at night to seven in the morning. It's like a huge thing, right? Yeah, for like three days. Jeez. And uh, and uh, so the whole day, all the way up until seven at night, I was just getting fucked up because we were in Vegas, dude, and I was just drinking, drinking, um, like more than anyone in in our group. And we're in Vegas, right? <laughs> and I was I was with people that drank, but I was fucking drinking like we were going through <laughs> vodka bottles like a motherfucker and it's acceptable at that time right, right? like now you're not ashamed of how much <laughs> yeah. you drink it's just like well i'm in vegas <laughs> i should be able to do this so um it's the first night and like i'm hammered and we're getting ready to go and i'm on a so what you do is you buy shuttle passes that because it takes you all the way to the rave it's like a 45 minute shuttle so i, I spent like 250 bucks on the shuttle pass to take me but i was on a different one than all my friends Cause they bought like the premium one and I just bought like the cheapest one. And, uh, and, but I was, I was so fucked up that I didn't like, I didn't want to figure out how to take the shuttle. So I just called a lift. So I'd already paid for a ticket, but I called a lift to drive me 45 minutes Ooh. over to this and like far distance to the rave. Right. Do you have any recollection of what that bill was? I don't. It was all, all, like almost a hundred dollars. I think. Mm. Yeah, it was up there. And so um, then we get there, and um, you know uh, we're all going around, still buying drinks and stuff in there. And then like the sun goes down, we're all like, "All right, let's pop our acid." And now at this at this time, I wasn't like that experience with acid i had done it like twice but never at a concert especially not at a rave with four hundred thousand people nice. <laughs> so um and up to this point you've been drinking all i've day, been drinking right? all day so we take the acid and like How many hits I, you take i start just one okay. but uh double dip you'll find out is it was a lot stronger than any of <laughs> us had <laughs> planned on it being mm. And so, you know, it's, it, you start to feel good when you're walking around <laughs> dancing. And then, like, I just remember we're running around. Cause there's lights and all this stuff everywhere. Like, it's made for people to be high on acid. Right. That's what the whole thing is for. So we're running around doing all this fun stuff. Felt like a movie, dude. I'm seeing all these lights and all this stuff everywhere. Holy shit. And then all of a sudden, I'm just, like, fucking gone. Like, I'm seeing planet. colors first on a different planet oh. for a little while. <laughs> it like, feels that way. Like I'm on a different, like I like it went this weird thing. Like I thought I was like the color red and like all that. Like I don't even know what was going you through my you head. You were dude. the color red. I thought I was the color red. <laughs> <laughs> like your skin, or you just? That's I not, know I was the color red. You were like, all red. It's not even a good color to be. <laughs> I know <laughs> your aura is all fucked up. It's a perfect color. I be. was the color red. I don't know how to explain it, but that's <laughs> the best way. And then I'm, I'm on this I'm on this other planet, and I see, I'm on this other. <laughs> I, see, I see my friend's face just come out of the color red and just go like right up to my face, and he goes, "Jordan, you lost your phone." 
And I look at him and I go, I did? And he goes, you just told me you lost your phone. And I'm like, you know my pockets? I'm like, oh, I have my phone. <laughs> So we're like, shit. And so like, I'm kind of back now, you know, right? And then, kind of um, back. <laughs> the girl, one of the girls that was uh, not uh, on drug, uh, on acid was like, okay, let's go find your phone. She takes me um, to go find it. And like, we got very lucky. Some people were actually going to turn it into lost and found and we saw them. So they gave me my phone back. Dude, in and, a crowd of 400,000 people, yeah, you saw the people shit. with your phone. Well, we went back to where we were sitting. Oh, And okay. so I had just left it on the ground where we were sitting. And so, um, she was like, I'm going to take this and put it in my bag. And I was like, yes, please do. Like, cause uh, I don't want to lose it again. And, uh, then as we go back, I'm like, is it okay if I like hold on to your back? Cause I don't really know where I'm at right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and so we're walking back to our group of friends and I'm holding on to her. And I don't know what happened, but at some point in time, I started holding on to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, dude. And then, like, I'm like, you're not my friend. And I, I fucking <laughs> look around and everyone's gone and I am tripping balls, dude. Uh, I, uh, yes. I'm like, <laughs> I love it. I'm tripping balls. And they have my phone. Mm. And there are 400,000 people there. And so instead of, like, you know, maybe being this, maybe being smart going, Oh, they're probably real close. I should just stand here. I'm off to try to find them. <laughs> so uh, I end up being lost at this rave for 12 hours by oh, myself, shit. tripping my ass off on acid. And like, I remember going up to the, my, my, my uh, camel pack was jammed. I couldn't get the lid off. And especially cause I was like really tripping really hard. I, like, I couldn't figure it out. So I got up to the water station cause I was so fucking thirsty. And I just handed it to the lady. I was like, eh? Eh? And she's like, what, what do you want me to do? I was like, eh? No, no words. Different planet, bro. And she couldn't get it off. So I felt like I worked, I felt like I worked on it forever, dude. And I got it open and I finally got some water. And, and like, it was just this giant, you know, like I had to pee, but every time I walk to the porta potties, man. Those are fucking scary when you're tripping mm. out hard, bro. Dude. And I'm just you get like, lost in those. so then I would, I would go back to where <laughs> lost yeah. in those. You can, dude. You do. That door closes. Dude, you're fucked, that door dude. closes, and you're just like, oh shit. <laughs> dude, dude. When I was tripping, I stayed away from bathrooms at all costs. <laughs> Mirrors, fucking, Mirrors yeah. and bathrooms. Dude. Oh, yeah, no dude. way. <laughs> and so I, I kept going. I kept going back to like where we had a locker, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna sit down here and wait for some of them to come one of them to come back to the locker and I would sit there crisscross applesauce on the ground <laughs> <laughs> and and then no one would come and I'd be like fucking dude I'm at EDC I need to walk around and go watch shows so I go around for an hour and then I come back and I do it again and <laughs> sit there I'm just got stuck in there like I'm gonna wait I'm like fuck it man I'm at EDC I'm gonna go walk around <laughs> so I do this all for you know fucking 12 hours the sun comes up and I thought about going back to my hotel because I was like I, at least I would feel safe there be and you know, whatever. And, uh, but I took the lift there, so I didn't even know how to get back on the shuttle. Oh, and you don't have your phone and I don't have my phone. Mm. So, uh, I end up staying there till it like closes at like eight. Oh, and then I wait geez. in this, I wait in this long ass hotline to get a taxi to pay $120 on the taxi mm. to take me back. To the hotel. By the time I get back to the hotel, I like knock on the hotel room door. And my, my friends are like, oh, God, please let that be Jordan. Please let that be Jordan. Holy they shit. open it up. And I'm just like, I need a fucking drink. And I just continue to pound the, the fucking bottle and then continue to go buy more because I was, you know, Feeling I was better. fucked up. So like that whole story to say that like I ended up spending so much money. I lost a day with my friends. Dude. <laughs> and I, no. thought, I thought, hey. You know, this is Vegas. And you know, for, <laughs> for some people it is Vegas, but for me it was the start of uh, a habit being formed. Was that kind of like early on in your, I guess, real bad drinking career? I would say... Was I would that near the peak of your downfall? <laughs> it, I would say it was like that trip and the, the drinking on that trip was when I started to have withdrawals if I didn't drink. Mm. So, I, I, I mean, I've always loved alcohol and been a, and been a drinker, but that was the trip where like, I started to have withdrawals if I didn't drink because I drank the entire 
time. Like there was the, after the second night, I remember too, like I was coming back, everyone's sleeping cause they've been raving until eight in the morning. And I was coming, waking everybody up like we're in fucking Vegas. And I'm like jugging a <laughs> bottle, like fucking cause I couldn't sleep. And I'm just kind of being an annoying little shit, which I do apologize to those friends for, but I think they had a fun time with me there. But uh, yeah, that, the, the, it was a very, very fun trip, but yeah, that was definitely the start of my, uh, my unmanageability because then from then on, it was like, I can't sleep without it. You know, if I, I'm having like these weird kind of fucking mental breakdowns, if I don't have it and, and all this different stuff. So that was when it, it was starting, but it hadn't gotten into its full, full alcohol, full blown alcoholism yet where I was just and up to this point. Had you ever even considered that you had a problem? No. So, so not all of this was just simply chalked up to Vegas. It was chalked up to Vegas, EDC and having fun. Mm. Yeah. Which is, you know, cause I listen to that story and it's funny as fuck, but like, I'm like, that doesn't sound fun. Yeah. That sounded scary. Like that sounded like, I mean, not, I, I don't know. It sounded like it was hard on the body. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was. You know, uh, I, like every time I went to Vegas, it's like, I came back and I had to go you know, get an IV drip or something. You know? <laughs> like, I just, yeah, that's just how I would do Vegas. And I thought it was normal. I thought I was just a normal person that went to Vegas, you know, right. but you know. did you, <laughs> did you continue this? Like when you got home, like, would you, is that how you would party a lot? Like, would you try to like continue that momentum after yes. that? Cause you said this trip kind of was like a kickoff point towards like withdrawals and that type of alcoholism. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it kind of just progressed from there until it just got too ugly. And I mean, where were your parents on all this? Like, where were they saying? Because like, I know um, in previous episodes, you've talked, you know, about your sister and how like neither you or your parents had no concept of recovery or anything like that at mm-hmm. all. What was it like the second go around, man? And just kind of seeing the effects that you were taking on, you know, you were having on them and just your life and peer life in general. Well, it, it's kind of hard because at first, you know, um, I would always just chalk it up to my parents are kind of prudes that don't drink. So they think if you drink, you're an alcoholic. That's right. what I thought in my head. And I'm like, I drink everyone I know. Cause at this time, like I drank more than my friends, but you know, I, I would still party with my friends. My life wasn't unmanageable, like unmanageable yet. I was still going to work and I was still, you know, I was holding down my job. I wasn't drinking during work. I might go in on no sleep, but I wasn't like drinking at work and all this stuff. So I was, I was making all these, I was like, I'm just having fun. You know, I'm just, uh, I thought I was normal, like being normal around my friends. And I thought my parents were just prudes mm. and granted they were right all along. And I've made amends to them and told them that they were right all along. And I was just, you know, too blind to see it. Um, but I, you know, I had been told that like a couple times, like, uh, even my ex-girlfriend when we broke up, she, she told me, she was probably the first person to tell me I was an alcoholic and I said, bullshit. <laughs> you're just you're just saying that I'm like I just fucking like to drink I like to have a good time and that's what I said to everyone I just like having a good time oh and, yeah and um you know I didn't I didn't even know that like I knew there were alcoholics but I didn't know that your body could become physically dependent on alcohol until it happened to me do you remember your first withdrawal from alcohol yeah it was that after that Vegas trip mm. holy shit what did it, what did it look like what did it feel like uh it was insomnia not being able to sleep and my um my entire body like maybe every five minutes jolting dude Mm. the The jolts jolts. yeah (laughs) it would be crazy when you're just laying there and i was like pop (laughs) everything in my whole mind no control whatsoever (laughs) dude Uh, (laughs) the fucking anxiety dude like the oh man i thought i was dying dude i was like (laughs) because we also did like molly and stuff on the trip too i was like i fried my brain something's wrong inside me you know but it was the it was from all the booze that i drank was Mm -hmm. really what it was and you were still going like because i remember there were a lot of times where i would stay up all night i'd party and i wouldn't go to sleep and i'd go straight to work from like Mm -hmm. a whole night of Mm -hmm. just hard drinking you know, Coke, all of it. And I just like bring a little bag and I'd still drink all the way up there. And that day, you know, the work day was hell. But I remember like telling like one of my family members, I was like, dude, I didn't even go to sleep, like yada, yada. And they're like, you still went to work? You're like, that's grown man shit. Yeah, Good job. Exactly. I was like, yeah, you're fucking right. It is. Yeah. 
Yeah. Hell yeah, I'm a bitch. I'm that dude. <laughs> I'm the one. <laughs> I'm the one. <laughs> dude, yeah, I got this. It feels that this. way. It feels that way. And like you have that like a comes where you're like, I still fucking go to work and I do. All- I, I kept that pride for a long time until it stopped happening. Until I stopped going to work. Nah. <laughs> nah, Not <yeah>. today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. And, you know, and I, I think I did speak about this before, but, you know, it, it kind of goes with what my sponsor was talking about with me. He was like, you know, that whole, like, just screwed up delusional way of thinking and our pride and our ego almost convinces us what we're doing is tight. Like, what yeah. we're doing is cool. Yeah. Like, I thought I was cool as fuck. Like, I was Slick. like, I'm the man, dude. Like, I can handle this shit. I'm still at work, yep. still making my money, still paying my bills. Dude, I'm the man. Like, I can handle this shit. And then one day, oh, I didn't hear my alarm go off. Mm-hmm. Now I'm missing work. Mm-hmm. And now yeah. my boss is like, yo, where are you at? And I'm like, oh, Joe, you know, sorry, dude. I'll be right there. And then all of a sudden, slowly but surely, like, it just starts taking that slide. Yeah. It gets worse and worse and worse. And I thought that, <laughs> I thought, I, I, dude, I really thought I could manage it. And looking back at it now, like, I've been in real estate a while, but I always had another job, too. Um Dude, I was unemployable. I I didn't get fired, and it was only because of the dude that I worked for. He was a close family friend of mine, and I would fucking lie to him all the time. And he knew it. He knew it. He knew what was going on. He (laughs) knows my family situation. Like, he's grown up with us. And and looking back at it now, I'm like, holy shit. If I was, like, actually, like, employed with, like, like somebody, not, Mm. like, family, there's no shot. I'm absolutely fired real fast. But those things... I don't look at when I'm in addiction. I mm. look at, look, fucking roofs over the head, baby. I don't yeah. got a problem. <laughs> Seven billion people. <laughs> I got this shit, you know? Like, mm. it's crazy, dude. And it's just weird, that delusional way of thinking and how my mind can trick myself or how I try to protect myself from my own ugly truth. Yeah. And it's like, even with that, and the story I told the last time, the, when I got fired from the hotel, so that was the first time I got fired from a job. And in my mind, it's, Fuck that job. Fuck, they're stupid. Like, who would fire someone for this? It's blah, 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 blah. blah. You're blaming that. Mm-hmm. And when in reality, it's it, when I look back on it, I was like, I'm surprised they kept me on for so long. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, nah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I must be really charming or something. You know? <laughs> People want to keep me around, even though. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Mm. It does, uh-huh. man. It feels that way. You know what's weird, too, is it seems like all of us at one point were like pretty successful during our addiction at least it's like on paper at least like on paper like goomer you were talking about like you made from what i can remember probably the most amount of money you ever made yeah. throughout a year when you were actively using still right yeah and i'm just, did that keep you from your rock bottom or whatever whatever your bottom ended up being for a while yeah, man the more i made the faster it went dude it was crazy mm-hmm. I, i'm horrible with money dude till this day it's like i'm like i can't manage money to save my life dude it's just like if, if I don't have enough mind saved up, then it's okay in my head to spend it all and just start all over. Like I that's easier. I like, well, I don't have, mm-hmm. well, this, this paycheck is not what I thought it was going to be, or it's not what I wanted. So it's okay to blow it off. Oh, well, you know, it's like, well, I'm starting to save up and it's not saving up fast enough. Well, you know, or I'll go buy a shoes and it's like, well, I did this. And then it adds and adds and adds before I you know it's like, I'm, I don't check the account or how much cash I'm I have left over. It a yeah, dude, it's just like until it's done. <laughs> Swipe yeah. and pray. <laughs> yeah. Come on, no, come on. Until it's just <laughs> the cashier will let me know when I'm broke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it's God's will, it's gonna pass. <laughs> <dude>. <laughs> I told Bree, I was like, dude, I, because dude, you were. I got a letter in the mail, and it turned out to be a mistake. But I got a letter in the mail saying my license was suspended. And I told Brie, I was like, dude, I think my life's more unmanageable in recovery than it was in my addiction. She's like, no, you're just sober now. So now you realize all of the shit. I'm like, damn. Yeah. I guess so. But I'm the same way, bro. I'm dude, still. I'm, I'm bad, dude. I can't manage shit, dude. Jesus, <laughs> take the wood. Dude, when you were talking, it reminded me, like, I would go out, like, Friday night and then be like, I'm just going out Friday night, crash out of this place. And then Sunday morning or Saturday morning, I'll just go home and. You know, not trying not to blow my check, you know, one night. And I would blow it all weekend, dude. Monday, Monday morning comes around. I haven't slept because I've been partying all weekend. And then sun rising, I was like, shit, I need to go to work. Hey, bro, let me borrow some clothes so I can go to work. <laughs> so I would borrow clothes from my friends, dude. And then I would just go to fucking work like that, dude. Hung over as shit, dude. Like, reeking of alcohol, dude. Like, fucking just look miserable, dude. And still mm-hmm. think you're fooling yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. dude. Mm. 
It's crazy, dude. The that's, shit that we would do. That's where I think like a normal person that was in my that that happened to, uh, like at that at EDC, like a normal person that happened to, probably would have got back to the hotel, been like, I'm exhausted slept and then continue to do whatever they were going to do the next day. <laughs> it just I like get I back to the hotel it. and I go, give me the bottle and I drink until the next day. Oh, yeah. Did like, you sleep at all? No. <laughs> Damn. In three days? No, I slept after the the that, first day, that, but, only, but only until the booze were off because I couldn't sleep. So I that's why I was mm. up before everybody else because everyone's sleeping. My, my booze wore off. I couldn't fall asleep. My eyes go bing and I'm like, I got to find alcohol somewhere and Oof. I go around the hotel. And then come back waking everybody up because I'm drunk. So that's <laughs> what my thought process is goes instead of getting sleep and going, man, I'm exhausted. That's tiring. Maybe I'll take it easy the next day. I go bottle. Let's go. <laughs> did any of your friends like after that say anything about any of it in the way you were drinking or did they also just assume Vegas? They I mean, a couple of them were very like heavy drinkers, too, but because of Vegas. Right. But uh, yeah, I definitely think I put a. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think they saw me in a different light after that trip. So no one like said anything, but I think they all you know saw me in a different dude, light. That's crazy. I remember the and first they- time I went to Vegas, dude. I was, I blew five grand, dude, and I didn't go to clubs, no, no nothing, dude, no gambling, nothing. I was like, how the fuck do you blow five grand on just bar hopping and booze, dude? It's mm-hmm. crazy, dude. Like. <laughs> So mad at that trip still, dude. Like, <laughs> I almost stole like a construction truck, dude. Like they found me like on the doorstep of the hotel, dude. Cause I apparently like we had like two rooms and like I tried to knock and I think I missed and I just collapsed like boom at the doorstep. And like one of my friends woke up and it was like 10 in the morning that I was like showing up back to the room. And then everybody was already like kind of getting ready to like for day two. And I was just like, all right, give me some muscle relaxers, a little bit of Coke and, and some tequila and a shower, and I'll be good to go, man. It's crazy, dude. I hate that fucking city, but yeah. I got a gambling problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to go. <laughs> yeah, the last time I went up there, I went up there for a job, proceeded to clear my bank account out in about 15 minutes, Fuck, and got dude. pissed, dude. I was like, just furious. I'm going to burn this fucking place to the ground. Just watch me. I was furious, dude. Proceeded to get hammered. Just absolutely hammered and took the drive home. Like I drove up, spent 15 minutes, dropped off what I needed to drop off, spent 15 minutes in the casino, lost all of my money, and then drove home. Just hammered, dude. Ended up having to pull up. Like I made one responsible decision that night, and it was to pull off to the side of the road because I was so fucked up and I was so tired. And then it wasn't until like this big ass semi just shook my car when it drove by that it woke me up and kind of sobered me up a little bit. And then I finished off home mm-hmm. but so i hate vegas dude i absolutely hate vegas but i and i think about all that stuff and i'm like dude what about any of it would have a normal person thinking like i'm doing just fine right now dude this is yeah. crazy like, what am I, I, it's delusional it's just dude. yeah uh, like like i said i went with people that were drinking heavily in vegas and they all looked at me like mm. Uh, <laughs> like yeah Dude. so i it, i didn't I couldn't see it then but it's like glaringly obvious now i, I mean i agree with you any normal person would have fucking yeah. been somewhat more responsible but that's just me i i i had a credit card and it was a hundred dollars for a lift there 150 dollars for a lift back even though i already paid 250 dollars for a shuttle <laughs> if i can do it put it on the credit card put it on the credit card mm-hmm. yeah yeah, that that's why i have the debt that i'm trying to pay off right now did you go all the way from <laughs> seattle to vegas yeah, we flew. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's but, crazy, man. Mm. Vegas, dude. That was the peak of my downfall on one work trip, dude. <sighs> that started, dude. Like, oh, man. I was disappointed in Vegas, dude, because the first time I went there, I thought I was like, <laughs> like, I was like, I'm ready to go, man. And then, like, it was like 2 o'clock, and people started, like, the it, like the crowd started, like, dying out. And I was like, yo, what the fuck, dude? I thought this was, like. A twenty-four hour the drinking city that place. Never yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was like, "This is bullshit." Dude. Like, where's everybody? <laughs> Isn't that out? New York. I don't know. No, the no, city Vegas. that never sleeps. No, both. That's, that's Sin City. Both, dude. Oh. But anyways, dude. So I ended up partying like with bums and like people on the street, dude. I was like dude. buying them liquor, dude. Like I was just partying at a subway and shit, dude. Because like, mm-hmm. I just wanted to keep going, dude. And. I got fucking tore up from the floor up, dude. Vegas tore, tore my head. Chewed me up, up and every, spit every me out. Every fucking time, dude. Re- oh, man. I ended up with some characters in my hotel room one night in Vegas, dude. Mm-hmm. I gave my hotel away. <laughs> my room, dude. To who? To some dudes on the street. 
<laughs> yeah, I was would. Mr. Generous, dude. That's, I was yeah, like, you still got a day out of character. Uh, I was like, I, I know. Uh, I was like, there's still a day on there, you know. Do it. It's on the, you know, company's. It's on the company's <laughs> card, dude. <laughs> so we finished the job like a little early, dude. And horrible, dude. Someone could have overdosed on there. Something could have happened, dude. And yeah, it I mean, been your card was with, still on liability. Uh, it wasn't. It was on the company card. Not company no. card, dude. Yeah, and somebody else's name, like, dude, that's stupid. And I thought that was normal, dude. Like. I would work all night and then I the the job got extended and I started kicking withdrawals like bad dude and nothing was I came across a bunch of other stuff but my drug of choice and it wasn't like you know calming me down and then I was just like go out on the streets and like look for the stuff and then buy and just go and use and then go to work all night and then do it all over again dude and like the job got extended and I ran out and and then we ended up finishing it, and there was a couple more days on the hotel, dude. I was just, like, smoking heroin and doing meth and, and drinking and you name it, dude. I had it. There were just people on the street. Like, I was just inviting people over, dude. Like, inviting people. <laughs> like, it was crazy, and I was just having a party in there, dude. Like, mm -hmm. it was like, you know, my coworkers saw it, like, go down, dude. But, like, they just thought, I, I, I don't know. It's kind of scary. Like, how do you, like, I put them in a shitty situation, dude, where they, they can't really talk about it. They can't really ask you like you know like like are you okay do you have an issue or anything but i would just tell him like hey i'm just tired and it's this night work that's kicking my ass dude but right it, it was just it's stupid dude stupid fucking decisions yeah it's crazy kind of when you think about it just when you're saying you know is it like saying the whole vegas thing and like especially the extremes of our addiction it's like it's like and we thought it was normal but it's not normal but even if you put it into the like very small perspective of Majority of people have never smoked heroin or meth <laughs> once. Majority of people have never finished a half gallon of vodka to themselves once. <laughs> or withdrawn. From or alcohol. withdrawn from sure. alcohol. So just that like very little part already makes us not normal. But here we are thinking it think was normal. It like <laughs> you know, we were normal. We were fine even mm. in the beginning. <laughs> That's crazy. Dude. I didn't even think about it like that. Our normal. <laughs> we, start, our normal. Yeah, we, we start our conversation off. So one day, so you know, I was smoking some heroin and doing some <laughs> hey. And then you know, like I ended up, you know, somewhere. <laughs> I, I don't know where I went wrong. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Dude. The story started off great. <laughs> I remember every story, like when I was like using and drinking, would be like, dude, I was fucked up. And then it started the whole story, dude. Now, it's, yeah. It's different, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Some of the a, shit I've done, and we've done, and we've shared with each other. It's crazy, man. Oh, I love it. Dude. Sounds like that was yeah. a, like a real turning point in your career. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was no drama. Don't get me wrong. It was still a good time. Oh yeah, yeah but, I don't downplay but, that. Uh, I still love the fact that you're the color red. I know. Dude, yeah, I, don't, <laughs> I can't like, explain how did it. Your friend, your friends ate the acid too, right? Yeah, they, they were. They did okay. It was. They stuck together. That's the thing, you know, like... Yeah, you got to stick together when you're tripping. Yeah. Dude. So, I mean, like, that 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 part where I thought I was the color red was maybe, in all reality, like, five or ten minutes. But it know? feels forever. But it feels forever. But it was still at the very beginning of the... Tri this is all in, like, the first hour that we took the acid. Mm. Holy shit. Mm. Right? So, it's that it was all, you know, and then they stuck... And then you know how it, it, you come down from that really, like, intense at first, and then it comes down and you go throughout the night. So that they were all together for that going throughout the night part. I was walking around by myself. Yeah, that's scary. <laughs> it was with four hundred thousand people, I'm like. Mm -hmm. I learned my lesson about tripping balls by myself, dude. Oh, uh, dude. I I was at my house one time and I was like seventeen, and I had this this Mac Daddy mushroom. This thing like was the picture, like the poster that we see. That's what this was. And I was, and my plan was to watch movies and make music all night. And I was going to be so creative and I was going to let the juices flow and all this type of stuff. I eat this thing in about an hour in, like I'm having, I'm laughing my ass off. My dad comes home. I think I'm going to be alone all day. Mm -hmm. My dad comes home and I'm trying to be normal. I'm trying to sit there. <laughs> That's the worst, dude. I'm just like looking at like the, the TV and all of a sudden the walls just, mm, mm. <laughs> and my dad's like, you good? I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You know, and then I got so freaked out and panicked, dude. I stormed up to my room and I just start sitting Indian style. I, I, yeah, like crisscross apples. Crisscross yeah. applesauce, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <I'll kill you. laughs> and I went up to my room and in the dark, I just sat in the dark and I thought I was going to die. I thought my entire family was going to die. Mm. I thought like all this crazy shit. I thought I was fried. Same way. I was like tripping, panicking, <laughs> panicking. 
panicking. <laughs> my dad comes up. He's like, dude, what the fuck are you doing just sitting in the dark? I was like, nothing. I got, I, I, so I don't even know what I said to him. He goes to walk away. And like, as he's walking away, I'm like, okay, moment of truth. I was like, dad. <laughs> that, that fear that I, like, I, like, I gotta, yeah, I was like I gotta tell you something he's like what I was like listen man I ate some mushrooms I'm having a fucking bad trip right now <laughs> and that's the first thing he told me he said why the fuck did you eat them by yourself yeah mm -hmm. I was like well I was gonna make music and it was gonna be fucking awesome he's like <laughs> and he's like dude come downstairs and I'm like no I can't go down there cause my little brother's down there and if I go down there this is what he's gonna say and he's gonna look at this and then this is gonna happen and then this Damn. is gonna happen I was going off bro and he just looks at me and goes oh yeah it's not gonna happen come downstairs come downstairs <laughs> <laughs> yeah just like that and I so I finally got downstairs and like nothing happened that in my mind I was convinced was going to happen and it like kinda calmed me down but I was still kinda tripping and again I'm like 16 or 17 at this point and Bree's you know 15 years old and he calls Bree and it's like one in the morning or something at this point. He's like, Hey man, I don't know what you got to tell your parents, but I need you over here. Cause I got to fucking work in the morning. And this kid's got about another six hours to go. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't take care of him. So uh, Bree somehow yeah. got over there, dude, and fucking took care of me. And so it wore off. That's crazy. So that's, I learned my lesson about tripping balls alone, mm. dude. That was scary, bro. I used to do them alone all the time. Man. Really? And you yeah. were fine? Mm -hmm. Sometimes. It was, <laughs> sometimes. There was, yeah, sometimes. There was some Something like there was like some type of pleasure of pushing like my mind to a certain extent. Like I, I would trip balls and try to like control the the hallucinations and all kinds How'd of crazy shit. It was horrible, dude. <laughs> <laughs> shit, dude. Okay, dude. Like that one time that I, I like what is it called? Candy flipping when you like, yeah. do like ecstasy and like all. And, and, yeah. Yeah. And let's, let's not think okay. mushrooms. Educational class, not good. <laughs> Don't try this at home. Yeah. So disclaimer. So I did all this psychedelics and like ecstasy and stuff like that, dude. And like, I did it by myself because I was like, I got to do this by myself. And at the time I had barely moved to Phoenix and I didn't really have friends or anything like that. I just, you know, the dudes that, that I would hang out with, like the burnouts, I guess you could say, at the, in the continuation school that I was going to. And I ended up copying up all this stuff, dude. And like, I took them in a room by myself at night while everybody's asleep. And I started tripping balls, dude. Like, I looked in the mirror. I turned into a werewolf. I ended up getting like a piercing needle, taking it to my face. It was a bloody mess, dude. What and then, the fuck, then dude? I put a strobe light in the fucking bathroom. <laughs> I put my stereo in there, dude. I cranked some fucking music, dude. And then like I put the strobe it's light. like back. Jordan's getting hyped dude, now. Dude, I put the strobe light <laughs> on top of like the shower head. So you could like it was strobe lighting like through the fucking the shower and the water, dude. And I was like seeing demons and oh, I was, Jesus, I was off the deep end, dude. I was in there for like who knows how long, dude. <laughs> But was, it was horrible, dude. I woke up the next day when it wore off and it was just blood everywhere, dude. It was just crazy. That reminds me of fucking Hot Rod. He's like, I got this acid, but I can't do it. He's like, well, I'll do it. So I got home and I got on my bench grinder. <laughs> you got a fucking knife in his head. That was me, dude. And I thought it was cool. Oh, oh dude. <laughs> No. That's these should have been like clear cut signs. Oh yeah, that we you know maybe we should just stay away. Even yeah. on weed, man, I would trip out. Never liked it. Never liked. Oh, it. I loved it. For oh, a yeah, I it never turned liked on weed. me. Though. It turned. It turned. It turned on me for real. It turned on me shortly before I got real bad on opiates, man. Real bad. I mean, but again, mm. all of it, dude. It's it's horrible. It, it it really was, man. I, I think back and I thought I was doing so good, man. I thought I was doing so good, and obviously, like there was a different level for me, like. When I when I I, I switched something I, I don't I I wouldn't have lasted either way I know that I wouldn't have lasted but I thought I was doing so good I thought I, because I had that whole social acceptability thing I had a car I had a job I had a house I you know I had a girlfriend like all this type of I, I I thought I was okay but I was just slowly but surely destroying my life I was destroying myself these times were getting less and less fun. Mm -hmm. It was no longer like a fun thing to drink all night and then go to work without any sleep and then continue mm. and then just be freaking just hung over as shit. If I even allowed myself to get hang hung over because I just continued drinking like it sounds horrible now and it Awful. wasn't fucking fun, man. Like it, what started off as fun. What what was that? Your fun, fun with problems, problems and, and then just problems. problems. Yeah, and then just problems. To just listening to you guys, like my mind just like went through a million fucking situations of unmanageability that my addiction played like on my life, and it was like, damn, I, I, 
I had so many different like times, like memories run through my mind that I can't even, I couldn't even capture one of them. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, dude. when you started talking about acid and shit, I was like, holy shit, dude. Like, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <It's a> real, <laughs> it was a real knee slap. <laughs> Jeez. Oh man, dude! The, yeah, one time me and two of my friends, dude, we fucking we got some acid off some young kid that they knew. Like, we were like in our, tw- you know, I was probably twenty three years so, old, twenty four, and they, my buddies were a couple years younger than me. And then they knew some kid that was like seventeen, sixteen, seventeen. They're like, "Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get some acid." This is the first time I ever ate actual acid. I always did mushrooms before. <laughs> All right, so I, <laughs> they're like, I'm like, I'm like this is shit. Like, who the fuck? Like, I sold drugs, dude. Like, a lot of drugs. So I'm like, this fucking kid, dude, he ain't got nothing, dude. Like, this seven, 16, 17 year old kid ain't got no good ass. Is that the time? You <laughs> yeah, dude. So, I, so, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so we go meet. I made that mistake so too. So we go meet with this kid, dude, and then I'm, my buddies are talking up acid, dude. Like, oh, it's so good, dude, because they were like into the hallucinogenics. And, <laughs> I was like, all right, man, cool, dude, let's do it. Like, I'm pumped about this. And they were like, it's way better than shrooms. I'm like, all right, man. Cause like shrooms started, I couldn't start. I like shrooms took over my mind, dude. Like at toward like later on. Mm-hmm. So we, we get in this, like meet this kid. We, we get these hits of acid and I take two of them and, and my buddies take like three or four each. And, uh, and we, we go back to my house, dude. And there was like a, we had what, a couple, a couple of girls like came over and hung out with us. So, this freaking trip, dude, this acid starts to kick in, dude. And and it's and they're like my I'm looking at my buddies and they're like looking at the looking at each other kind of weird and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And I'm like, I start feeling this shit and they're like, like this isn't normal, dude. Like this isn't normal. That's what they, <laughs> that's that's what what you they said. Told? That's what they said. This is my first time ever tripping on acid. And I was like, what the fuck do you mean this isn't normal? <laughs> I, so, I, started, so I started freaking out, dude. I'm like Oh shit! What the fuck? What? So they they end they <laughs> this trip ends up going on, dude. For and we're on the upstairs of my of my room. Oh yeah, we take us at like two in the morning, right? And, oh fuck, great idea. And, and I and I thought it was just gonna be like six eight hours, you know, and I'd be like coming down, I'd be cool. Well, I already I you know I I get deep into my trip, and it's about I don't know the sun starts coming up, and I had like these big like three bay windows upstairs like in my room, and I could look out, and it was just and it was fall time, and I could see all the trees like the woods, and it was all the colors were just like melting together, and I can remember all three of us just standing there uh, <laughs> looking yeah, out dude. the window for for uh, like hours, dude, watching this like you know in the, in the morning, and and my buddy like had these girls over. And my, my, my buddy was like hooking up with this girl, like tripping on, you know, the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Not, <laughs> for, yeah. I, was it tight? Well, he was, <laughs> no, like it, it was fucked up, but he like, wasn't, wasn't wearing a condom the whole time. Like it was just, uh, it, I could get, I could get deep. Like it was crazy shit. But anyways, uh, my how do you know that by the way because <laughs> i had to go get it dude it, i'm not even gonna get into it dude so my my one friend like oh yeah i forgot about this part of it dude my my buddy he sees a, a freaking big ass spider and for some reason he proceeds to grab this spider and i'm talking like a big ass spider dude. jordan's out <laughs> and he, Jordan, he's out <laughs> In front of me, me, my buddy, and these two girls, he takes this spider and puts it in his mouth and eats it alive while we're... Jordan's gone. While, we lost Jordan. Gone. While we're, Thank you for listening to another episode. <laughs> while while we were tripping, dude. And I'm like, I'm freaking blown away. And this is like so... <laughs> Jordan's about to throw up. This is like the darkest trip ever, dude. Oh. I can't even ex- <laughs> like explain it. So sun comes up. We're, I'm like off in my room. By this time, like my buddy's in his room. Like it was two separate rooms. My buddy's in his room, like with that chick, and then my my other friend, like in my room, and that other girl's like sleeping, and and I'm just sitting there, like in this other freaking world that is super dark. Like I thought this was never gonna end, dude. And the sun starts coming way. up, you know, and and then like whatever, the sun's up for like an hour, a couple hours, and and I'm sitting there just like don't know what the fuck is going on, and all of a sudden, dude, I hear. Donald <laughs> fucking screw my name and I was like oh shit dude it was my he was like 
Donald, wake the fuck up. We got to go to work. I was like, <laughs> oh, I was like, oh shit, shit, dude. I So I planned this job. Like with this is when I was doing construction. I had like my excavator and I, I bid this job and I planned it. But, you know, I thought I could take acid at two in the morning and it would be worn off by the time I, you know, was going to go do this job. At what time in the morning? At nine in the morning. Oh, fuck. So yeah. I and he's just screaming my name and I'm like, I'm fucking in panic mode, dude. I'm scared to death right now. <laughs> 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 like, I'm, I seriously was so fucking scared. <laughs> I, I end up he keeps yelling, yelling. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming like, <laughs> for like an hour, dude. He's yelling. And finally, I, I make it downstairs. And he's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I was like, dude, I took some acid last night. I thought it was going to be worn off by now. And it's not. And it's really, really strong acid, dude. <laughs> so and this, I, I end up making it out. Like I, I drive my truck with a trailer with a freaking big ass excavator on the back of it to this job, tripping balls on this. It ended up being experimental acid Jeez. it was called doc so this shit was like extremely strong and it was like some experimental shit that wasn't <laughs> legit acid that we took i end up taking this truck whatever i go to this job i tear this i, I well i try to run the machine <laughs> and tear this building down so you're like, running an excavator I'm running a big excavator on tripping on balls <laughs> on acid tearing this big ass block building down but I can't even get a fucking piece of this building into the dump truck because I'm so fucked up. <laughs> my dad is standing there. Well, I, can, I remember all this, dude. He's standing there looking at me like just shaking his head. <laughs> and he's like, get the fuck out of me. <laughs> and I was like, I got this. I got this. And he's like, get the fuck out of the machine. So he finally made me get out, dude. And I just, I was there for like, I don't know, four hours tripping balls watching him do this. <laughs> and then I had to proceed to go talk to the homeowners to get paid by them for doing this job. Holy shit, and I, dude. And then they're like, oh, yeah, we need something else fixed. You know, you come, come take a look at it. And I'm like, <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> like, they want to be like, don't make I'm me like, do it. I'm like looking at their hot water tank and he's asking me questions like what they should do to like Holy fix their fuck, price. Dude. And I'm like, and I can remember, like, looking back now, he was looking at me like, what the fuck is wrong with this dude? <laughs> oh, yeah, so I, dude. Up, I, get the, I get a check yeah. off of him, freaking pack this shit up. I, I end up, you know, I take the machine back to my house. Well, my friends are still there. <laughs> Holy shit. Still tripping, as I'm still tripping. This, this what, trip, what hour are you on by this point? This was like five, six, I don't know, tw good 12, you know. 12 hours, 13 hours. I'm still tripping mm -hmm. hard, oh, yeah. harder than ever, dude. It's like, it's, I, we end up sitting in my room in my house for the next whole freaking night tripping. This stuff ends up lasting like two and a half days. Dude. Oh my God. I'm sitting in my room upstairs. <laughs> a like nightmare. After, yeah, dude. It was like a nightmare that never fucking ended. Man, that's crazy, man. Gosh, dude. Did you guys so, ever have a good trip? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, a I, lot. Oh, I had great trips, but that trip was... My trip wasn't days. even bad, though. It was just I lost my friends, but the trip itself was fine. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't recommend doing DLC. But once it, when they start coming down... Or drugs. Like, yeah. <laughs> Does it get bad for you guys, too? Yeah, yeah. Like dark? In general. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That shit happened to me right, all the time, dude, man. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I, you know, like we wanted, we wanted an episode that we could just kind of giggle at. And honestly, I didn't, we didn't plan it, but I think acid stories just is, is a good to tell some uh, war stories, but are also have the giggles. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think <laughs> I, well, I had, the, I had the exact same experience Dylan had with mushrooms on my first trip. I thought my whole family died and like, I had to come clean dude to my family. Like when <laughs> they did come home, clean. I had to. And I remember sitting like at my kitchen island, like just like like I was like the biggest freaking disappointment like ever because I was tripping on mushrooms. And, like, but I had to tell them, dude. It's like that. Yeah, it, it was, was like bad, that. man. I was, oh uh, my god! I, the first mushroom trip was. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm out, dude. <laughs> Oh, I'm just sitting oh, here thinking. Oh, unmanageable, all, all the, bro. All the trips, it was so bro. unmanageable, man. And so those were all just warning signs. Yeah. I feel like those were just all so many warning signs. 
it just how bad it is, man. And then there's always that turning point. You know, that Vegas trip, like when you come home and start withdrawing, that's a serious turning point in alcoholism. Yeah. That first withdrawal from alcohol, that's a serious turning point. Mm -hmm. You know, Bree was just talking about that trip that we took uh, when I was all jacked up. You know, we went to Napa and, I, and I'm such a freaking asshole, dude. I, I'm, I'm in recovery at this point and I'm, and I'm super bad on fentanyl and she has no idea that I'm, that I'm even, she thinks if I, I was getting clean, but she didn't realize I had like made the switch to fentanyl at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm over there, dude. And I'm at all these wine tours. We go to all these wine tours and I'm sitting there nodding out, telling everyone, nope, I'm sober. I'm not drinking. We go to all these wine tours. I even have the balls that when I get back, I go to a meeting. I'm like, yeah, I went to all these wine tours and I didn't take a sip. <laughs> like I'm all like trying to brag about it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But that was like kind of that trip that the floodgates opened and I made an ass out of myself that trip. And I was just horrible looking and I'm looking at, she showed me pictures of how I looked now. And again, you asked me right then and there, I didn't have a problem. Mm -hmm. I, 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 hey, I'm in Napa. I, I took you to Napa, didn't I? You know, like I got all of these excuses as to why I'm okay and why what I'm doing is fine and it's not a problem. The floodgates got open that trip and thank God, man. Like really thank God because that, again, that's kind of one of those things that started the journey that I needed to get closer and closer to that misery, that depression, that gift of desperation that would eventually, eventually lead me into recovery. Yeah. Because again, as funny as it is to talk about all this yeah. shit now, it's funny now because we survived it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's it. No shit, dude. Like, I, a lot of this stuff was not fun. It was scary, dude. It was scary a lot of times. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. And I, I had, like you said, just having a withdrawal from alcohol and not not knowing that was terrifying to me like i didn't know what it was you know i'm <laughs> i'm googling fucking the the jolt i'm googling like you know what happens if you you know do this and you know if, if you google if you have a cold the internet tells you you're gonna die so mm -hmm. <laughs> you know i was seeing all this stuff like you need to go to the hospital and blah blah, blah and all this i'm like ah! but yeah it's it, it's terrifying and i think you know because we're addicts and we like, that's just how our brain is programmed. We don't do anything in, you know, moderation. Everything gets taken to excess and we're always looking for that next, that next thing. You know, like I said, a normal person would have came back and, and went to sleep, but I was like, let's keep drinking. Cause that's how I feel better. Totally. Is by drinking. Even in sobriety. Yeah. Just with the fireworks. Couldn't just light them off. I couldn't just light them off. You had to put them in each other's pockets. I couldn't just light one off. I had to ollie through it. Yep. Proceeded to burn my eyelid because I needed to ollie through fireworks going off. Like all that adrenaline rush. Like you said, man, it's everything is taken to the extreme. Mm. And it's one of those things where like I need the program because I still need to be taught how to live. Yeah. Like I'm still this like little kid that needs to be told what to do. Like do this, pray meditate, work this step, work this step, call this person. Like I almost need it mapped out for me because I'll still make a mess out of my life. And my life will still be unmanageable in recovery. If I do not like work a program. Yeah. And it's been proven mm -hmm. time and time again, <laughs> ask the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get, I get annoyed with it sometimes a little bit because I'm like, this, this thing treats me like a, a fucking child. This program does. And it's like, I'm, you know, Stop talking to me like that. And then it's like, ah, well, you're a baby. Yeah. You're still learning. You have to be talked to like that because when you were left on your own, you created a mess. So now these things need to be put in place because you need to learn how to do it. Oh, dude. And it's like, I never learned to adult. Yeah. And I just got a text message yeah. getting my ass ripped because my room was dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, nice. I'm 30 and I'm still like, Clean my room, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, fuck. It's rough. It's rough. Like I said, I need to be told what to do. Life's, the life's still unmanageable, but it's a lot more manageable now than it was then. Oh, 100%, <laughs> dude. And honestly, when I work my program, yeah. life's pretty fucking good. Yeah. And I'm usually a pretty good person. You know what I mean? Sometimes, I guess. Hmm. It's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, dude. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Got a daily Donnie for mm. us? Yeah, I do, Dylan. Actually, it's... Uh, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of which one, dude. Uh, probably, dude. Uh, winners, winners never... <laughs> Don't even fucking... <laughs> 
fucking do it. <laughs> he was so serious. No, he was. He was uh, going for it, don't dude. Don't do it. He was going for it. <laughs> <laughs> Winners never quit and quitters never win. Uh, unless you're, unless you're in recovery. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan gave it I to like me. it. I like I'm it. Done. I dropped the mic. Dude. I'm all I'm all about it. Okay. <laughs> that was the daily dog. Oh man. <laughs> all, right. Uh, all right. Well, that was fun. Thanks for the laugh. I needed the laugh. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. Goomer, Jordan. Donnie, thank you guys for keeping me clean today. Everyone out there, thank you so much for being a part of the recovery. Uh, I'm still new to this, so I don't really know which way to look. But if you like this show, share it with someone, hit that subscribe button. And uh, thank you for listening to another episode of Not So Anonymous.